Only one thing that hey, when my girls start to trip and hate before escape, I call Sirius Sex in 98. Yeah, Thursday, the Fox Hole 7 and 9. To talk to Zoe Williams before I lose my mind. Yeah, I need advice on my relationship. Because <laughs> I'm about to start breaking shit. I can't take it no more. I got to holler and so the relationship pro. Before we pack up and go, I got my foot out the door. And down for leaving. But first, let me holler as up the voice of reason. I got one foot out the door. And down for leaving. But first, let me holler as up the voice of reason. Ladies and gentlemen, Zometheus Rising, back in the building Thursday night, I'm on the foxhole, the most revolutionary radio in the world, nowhere else can you find this kind of stuff man, topics galore and you know I can't disappoint, get to your phone lines 855-369-9898, tweet me at Foxhole, F-O-X-X-H-O-L-E, or get at my personal Twitter account, at Zoe Williams, Z-O-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. You got to go to ZoeWilliams.com. I need you to flood that website with comments, with uh, posts, questions, topic ideas, whatever. Email me, Z-O at SiriusXM.com. Join me on Facebook. Again, I urge you guys to join me on my social media because the conversations that we're having all week long building up to tonight's topic is epic. I know on this show I I talk a lot, but during the week, you guys get to say everything. I just throw the questions out. I don't answer, you answer. So follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams, and tweet me tonight, at Foxhole, and go to my website, www.zoewilliams.com. Tonight, another banger. Are you a soulmate? Or a cellmate? Come, what? Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? An intriguing look at codependence, toxic relationships, person addiction, and love as mental illness. Let me do it again. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? I'm going to give you my definition of a soulmate and a cellmate when we come back. But I got to take a quick break. I'm telling you, you're listening to The Foxhole. Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, 855-369-9898. Dude, are you dating somebody who's crazy in love? Get at me and let me know what your story is. I'll be back in 2.2. Peace. Man, we're always saying, you so crazy. The person I'm dating is nuts. I'm asking the question, are you with your soulmate? Or are you serving time with a cellmate? Somebody call me right now at 855-369-9898. I'm telling you, this is a very expansive topic. We're talking about codependence, toxic relationships, red flags, person addiction, love is a mental illness. I mean, all of this stuff, man. You know what? We were doing some research. Well, I need you to get to the phone lines right now, 855-369-9898. Call me with your story. Talk, call me and tell me what you're going through. I'm going to throw some questions out, of course, just to lather you up. But uh, have anybody ever heard of enmeshment? I mean, it's another term, being enmeshed in another person. It's another word for codependency, right, where the person is using, and, we, and, and I know everybody's heard the, the term emotional blackmail where a person is manipulating you emotionally to care, pay attention, and they're using you, and, you know, they're always playing the victim role and all that kind of stuff. But have you ever heard of the term a one-way relationship? Is that person that you're in a relationship with who has to have everything their way, you know, uh, controlling, abusive, and all of that stuff, one-way relationship, everything is about them, they're inconsiderate of your feelings or whatever. Uh... I mean, because there are many books out there about one-way relationships. Is that person a cellmate because everything has to be about them? Do you feel like you're imprisoned in that relationship? A lot of times people can't get out of those relationships because of maybe financial obligations or they've got children or they're married. But what about the people who are single and tolerating those type of relationships? Call me right now, 855-369-9898. Are you a cellmate or a cellmate? A soulmate or a cellmate. Sorry, are you a soulmate or a cellmate? Of course, as is common, I have questions. But before I get to those questions, let me hit you with the top 10 signs that you might be dating a cellmate instead of a soulmate. 
self-absorbed. Are you dating somebody that's self-absorbed? Self Call me right now, 855-369-9898. Egocentric, pompous, narcissistic, thoughtless, insensitive, inconsiderate. Somebody call me right now, 855-369-9898. You are in a toxic relationship if blank is happening all the time. Somebody call me right now, 855-369-9898. Is there, listen to this one, this is crazy right here. Is there such a thing as a same-sex soulmate? Can your soulmate be your homeboy? Or for women, your homegirl? And the reason why I ask this is because this goes into a deeper question about unconditional love. And I hit this question. I, I put it out there on Twitter today. 855-369-9898. You're listening to Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. Sirius XM satellite, the foxhole, 98. You know what we're doing. But I, I asked the question, can unconditional love only be experienced from parent to child and back from child to parent? because we have so many conditions and so many rules and regulations for our spouse that we're looking at them through our expectations of these ideas. And we never really see them or accept them in the way that they actually are, right? Maybe our ability to love our spouse is limited. Maybe we can't even get to unconditional love. Maybe there's a ceiling or a cap on it. Somebody call me right now, 855-369-9898. What are your top five signs that you are dealing with a cellmate as opposed to your soulmate? What are these people doing that makes you feel like you're in prison? Call me right now. Can only one person in your lifetime be your soulmate? One soulmate for one life at a time. Can you have multiple soulmates? A lot of people are calling me right now saying, what? You know, I was getting hit up all day uh, or all week long on Twitter at Zoe Williams. Go to www.zoewilliams.com, the voice of reason. That is my personal website. I need to talk to you. Let me know what you think. A lot of people think that man, one soul, one soulmate, one lifetime. I believe totally different. Somebody call me right now. Are the difficult slash toxic people in our lives really our true soulmates? Because I believe through difficulty you learn. And I don't believe that your soulmate is comfortable, easygoing, and everything is honky-dory because you're soulmates. I think the soulmate is there to, tr uh, to challenge you, to develop who you are, to reflect your weaknesses back to you. And sometimes those soulmate relationships aren't the most pleasant. They don't feel the best. A lot of people mistake a soulmate for feeling good. 855-369-9898. Is the soulmate here to make you better? And if so, could that be the most devastating relationship you've ever been in? Somebody call me right now. 855-369-9898. Get at me now. You're listening to the voice of reason. Zometheus Rising. Foxhole Radio. The most revolutionary radio in the game. Thanks to Jamie Foxx for giving us this opportunity to really cut up. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? Come on, somebody call me right now, 855-369-9898. Do people always take your kindness for weakness? Hmm? Sometimes being empathetic to people may draw in that emotional vampire. Oh, this person likes to take care of people. Well, maybe he'll take care of me, right? Maybe I can play on his empathy or her empathy. Call me right now, 855-369-9898. Call me. This show is going to be crazy. I see the phone lines are on fire right now. Can and here's another one. I got I mean, I got so many questions. Can being in love, a lot of people are having problems with this one here. Can being in love be as addictive as crack cocaine or alcohol? Right? Can love, can being in love have the same negative side effects as well? Withdrawals? A lot of people have a hard time breaking up. A lot of people have a hard time disconnecting. Somebody call me right now, 855-369-9898. You got to get at me. I want you to call me and let me know what your definition of a soulmate is. I want you to call me and let me know what your definition of a cellmate is. I want you to call me and tell me how long you've been serving time with your cellmate. If you're with a cellmate, somebody call me, 855-369-9898. I see the phone lines. I know they're crazy, but I'm going to ask one more question because I just love doing it, right? I just love doing it. Can a soulmate be a best friend? family member or co or coworker instead of a girlfriend or boyfriend does it have to be an intimate partner 855-369-9898 how is manipulation related to toxicity levels in our relationships 
Why do our spouses and loved ones love manipulating us? Call me right now if you're dating a cellmate. Get at me, 855-369-9898. I'm going to the callers right now because the phone lines are full. We want Dennis from Arizona. You're in the building. Talk. You know, I got to tell you something. I just punched out of a 25-year prison sentence. Wow. It, and it was a long time. I figured convicted murderers get less time than I had to put in. <laughs> but, sometimes, but, but sometimes you do that for uh, for a variety of reasons. In my case, I did it for my kids. Their, their mother died, and I remarried, and, and she was the only mother they knew. And uh, they were ages three to eight, so... You know, sometimes you sacrifice for your kids, and that's one reason you might have a selfie. But the other thing is, are you a good steward of your relationship? Mm. See, and that was the thing. I think we both, we, we, we were right to get married. We were wrong not to be good stewards of it. And after a while, it is a selfie, where you, you can't wait for her car to leave the driveway in the morning, and you don't want it to come back in the evening. You know what I mean? Wow. Good point. Good point. Thanks, Dennis. Arizona, thanks for calling in. Thanks for waiting. Man, crazy. Amanda, Dallas, in a relationship with a cellmate. Talk to me about your sentence. Amanda? We can't hear her. So I'll just, you know me, I like to move on. Anthony from Georgia was in a controlling situation and got out. How did you escape your prison cell? Talk to me. Well, actually, I'm back in it. <laughs> oh, sh you walked but, in, but or did I, she come catch you? <laughs> well, I, you know, it, it's it's crazy. Um, my personality, man. I mean, when I say I love everybody, I love everybody. That's that's just the way I was raised, you know. Um, my wife, she, you know, she uh, she's just different, and uh, I think that she she definitely. I don't know what exact. I'm still trying to figure out what it was that she was looking for, but um, I think. <clears throat> She just knew, and, and especially when we were friends and just watching how I handled certain relationships, she liked my obedience, you know? Mm. My dad never cheated on my wife, as far as, I mean, on my mom's, as, long, as far as I know. Mm. And uh, so I had a good example of a, of, a, of, a, of a man in the household with a woman, and uh, I don't know, I, I, I do feel like she lured me. And, uh, but <clears throat> it, it's a tough subject, and it's crazy that, that I just happened to tune in and he was talking about it, but... Um, I do have kids, so that's why it's kind of I, like like uh, the other guy said. You know, it, it makes it tough, especially when the kids are involved and they're happy. You know, you don't want to you don't want to send them through the crazy house. You know, from 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 uh, having bad experiences and stuff like that. But but let me um, ask you this, Anthony. Let me ask you this. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but uh, don't you think it might be even worse if you stay in a bad relationship? Don't you think it might be worse for the children to experience that distance, that disconnect, the, sometimes that angst and animosity between the mother and the father? Don't you think that's a even worse proposition for them and their development? It, it, yeah, in some ways, in some ways, it definitely is. But but here's the thing, um, and, and I think that the, the media and, and just the country in general is, are, is promoting this. Uh, as soon as somebody does something wrong, you leave. I mean, I was watching Tyra Banks the other day, and she was going off this, that, and the third. You know, you know, somebody does this, you leave them. You know, and it's just we got to be fair here. Mm -hmm. um, no two people are alike. There's not any two people in this world, your best friend, somebody you work with, or whatever, soulmate or not, that you're going to get along with every single day. And mm -hmm. marriage is tough. It's not easy. It's right. not easy at all. You're gonna bump heads. You, I man, I'm, I lived with my cousin for for on and on for three years, and we scrap a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. But right. I love him. I, I I love that man. But but you know what I mean. But we scrapped a lot. Um, that that's just the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the good thing is, uh, I actually went to jail over a horrible fight me and my wife got into, and uh, but we both decided to go to counseling. And okay. since then, we found things out about ourselves that we never knew. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I do agree, yes, it can be more devastating to the children. It can be. But you have to try. You have to try. If there are kids, you have to try. If nothing else, and I tell her this every day, if we do not make it, I can't guarantee you that I won't get married again, but <clears throat> I know that I will try my, my best to be friends, and I know that... If we ever get a divorce, I want it to be 
a, a mutual agreement and that we we be happy with at least ourselves when we do decide to split and not <clears throat> just you know I want to you know no no negativity at all N- wow. no. Wow. Well, 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 thanks, Anthony, for the call. I appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate, appreciate you hanging on the line. But I think it's really, really a tough expectation. Um, it, it's really unrealistic to think that there's not going to be any negativity. Uh, a lot of times people don't realize that the number one uh, factor for long-term relationships is not common beliefs. It's not great sex. It's not financial security. The number one determining factor for long-lasting, meaningful relationships is conflict resolution skills. The better those skills, the more uh, chance the relationship has to, you know, grow and last. If you don't have great uh, conflict resolution skills, that relationship is in trouble. The sex could be on fire, but you could hate each other. I mean... Oh, I, I can go deep. I, I was about to get real personal, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to John in Houston right now. John, talk to me about your situation. Are you cellmate or soulmate? Oh, I refuse to be a cellmate again. I refuse <laughs> it. I was <laughs> married for 16 years. I did what I could, did the best I could. And all this dating I'm doing now, um, I hear all the things that these women say and what they try to do. And it's like this true love thing. Love comes from... If you get pleasure from making your partner happy, that's mm-hmm. love. Mm. And a lot of people out here, they want they want to find out what you will do for them. Mm-hmm. And if you kiss their butt and do for them, uh, then they then they are yeah they'll love you if you buy their love from them. And mm-hmm. that's not true. And a lot of relationships, when people get married, they have these unrealistic expectations of what marriage is. I agree with you when you say that conflict resolution is the number one thing. You are so on the point with that. It's how you resolve those those difficult situations. Thanks, John. Appreciate the call. Oh, sorry. I thought you were finished. Finish your point, sir. But uh, as far as uh, staying with the kids, I think it is uh, less damaging when you stay as long as you don't fight in front of the kids. Mm, Good point. Good point. Thanks for the call. Houston's in the building because of you. Rebecca from Texas. Significant other hides everything. Yeah, that's some cellmate activity. Talk to me. I was wondering what your opinion was on he he won't let me see his cell phone. When we first got our cell phones, like I was just looking at it, just seeing what it was about and everything. And he like, no, 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 it's none of your business. And I haven't seen it since. And he keeps it hid. So I was just kind of wondering what you thought about that. Rebecca, is his cell phone interesting because he keeps it hidden from you? Is that just something that's in your craw? Like, well, because it's off limits, I want to know what's in it? Well, I think it's because um, I know, you know, kind of what he told me, how he was before we met. So Uh, so you assume that that's who he is today? No. What if that is? No. I just, you know, it's kind of like now it's like, okay, what are you trying to hide? Ah, got it, got it, got it. Well, you know what? Are you guys married? No. <laughs> How long have you guys been together? Uh, 16 months, the eight. Okay, what kind of relationship is it? Is it going strong? Is it still developing? Where are we? 16 months is really young. You guys are still in the euphoria age. So why would you expect more at this stage of the game? Um, I, I, would, I just kind of, now what was the question? I'm sorry. I'm just saying, why would you look for, I mean, why, why, I mean, do you plan on marrying this guy? Would you like to marry this guy? I mean, you guys are really young in the game. 16 months yes. is a very young, embryonic relationship. Why would you be asking for his cell phone at this stage of the game? I'm just asking. Uh, well, I don't know. It's just because he just, we just both got cell phones. And it's just like I say, when I was, um, it's just, um, it's just like you said, it just kind of piqued my curiosity. Okay, what do I'm you just saying, if you guys get clothes together, should you share clothes? <laughs> no. All right. Listen, it's early. Listen, let me give you this piece of advice uh, okay. as far as monogamy and men. Let me just keep it real. Monogamy is a new concept. A lot of people think monogamy is old. It's really a new concept in the sense of, This one person 
is going to fulfill all of my needs. Y you understand what I'm saying? That's a new concept. It's romanticism. We're, num we're together, you're my soulmate, we're gonna fulfill each other. That's not true, because people are constantly evolving and growing and changing, so how I felt when I first met you might be totally different in 18 months. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, exactly. again, the relationship has to evolve with the beliefs. As the beliefs change, so does the relationship. So you might start off with a monogamous intent but 24, 36 months down the line, you may think different. You may want to be different. And that's when a person has to be totally open and honest about who he is or who she is today. Hey, you know, I'm feeling this way. And I don't think I want to go any further. Or I don't want to, I, I want to change the dynamic of our relationship to this. But a lot of times people get in that groove and they get, you know, get into a uh, security mode and they don't really, really want to change anything. And that's when the double life comes out. I'll just go over here and do what I really want to do without telling my partner. And that's when more problems and more cellmate like behavior starts happening. Lying, secrecy and all of those kind of things. 855-369-9898. That's the number to dial. If you're just tuning in, tonight's topic is crazy. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? An intriguing look at codependence toxic relationship person addiction love as and, and love as mental illness this show is crazy we're gonna cover a lot of ground we got guests we got i'm telling you, we got a host coming in now that's gonna be crazy well after the break that's gonna be crazy i need you guys to get to your phone lines right now 855-369-9898 and before i take uh uh my next break i'm just gonna ask you right now what is the best way to detox from a toxic relationship do you have a toxic relationship 12-step detoxing program? Somebody call me right now. I'm about to take a quick break. I'll be back in 2.2 seconds. The Voice of Reason, Zoe Williams, Foxhole Radio. We'll be back in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to The Voice of Reason, Foxhole Radio, Sirius XM 98. ZoeWilliams.com is the destination. I need you to get there right now. I need posts. I need comments. I need show topic ideas. Trust me, I'm going to interface and interact with you right there. That is Zoe Williams Central, ZoeWilliams.com. Get there. Follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams. Email me directly, at Zoe Williams, at SiriusXM98. Tonight's topic, are you a soulmate or cellmate? Oh, my God. Here, let me ask you this. Can your parents be a cellmate? Can you be in prison with your parents? Sometimes you have a parent that's indifferent. All they care about is paying the bills. They don't know how to empathetically connect with you, but they know how to provide. Sometimes you have a parent that maybe connects emotionally or intellectually, you know, but doesn't provide and that causes a problem. Talk to me right now. What is your relationship with your parents? Are they a cellmate or a soulmate to you? Get at me, 855-369-9898. Toxic love, what is it? One of the biggest problems with relationships in this society is that the context we approach them from is too small. We are taught getting the relationship is the goal. You have to remember. Let me tell you something about a relationship. A relationship is a highly sophisticated thing, man, that you have to maintain. If you don't have the tools to maintain it, it's going to be shabby. It's going to break down. You're going to be confused. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be in pain. Uh, it starts early in childhood with fairy tales where the prince and the princess live happily ever after. That's not true, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you got to keep that relationship oiled emotionally, physically, psychologically, intellectually, spiritually, financially. If you don't have the lubricant to keep it cracking, it's going to break down on you. Right. I always say what's in your relationship toolbox. Right. Well, what does the toolbox consist of? Well, it consists of communication styles. It consists of uh, temperament styles. It consists of emotional IQ or lack thereof. It communica uh, communication skills. I mean, your conflict resolution skills. There are a lot of things that you can put in that toolbox that will keep your relationship running like a fine-tuned automobile. But if you don't have it, it's going to break down. Simple and plain. Um, there are also books and movies we're happy couples right off into the sunset. It's fake. We got to stop believing it, right? 
songs have us feeling like I can make you know, I can make you smile and I love you and I can't live without you. You're my everything. Wrong. 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 It just you just don't roll out of the bed and have a great relationship. It's really that simple. You just can't do it. And then you got some people who carry baggage from their childhood, how they were raised, how they interacted with their parents, picked up some of the parents flaws and still have unreconciled issues with parents that play themselves out in their personal relationships. I keep telling people relationship is a classroom, but here's the difference. It's like a classroom that's made of mirrors. You go into the classroom and what do you see? Yourself, your reflection, and all of your flaws and weaknesses are triggered by someone who is designed to get that response out of you so that you may develop and grow to the next level of understanding. 855-369-9898. My definition of a soulmate is someone or anyone that can help you evolve. They can be good-hearted, positive, negative, selfish, or indifferent towards you. Their only purpose is to help you matriculate to the next development of you. Right. It might be dropping off some curriculum that's specifically designed for you. I was in a relationship with this girl and she pissed me off and she brought out the ugly in me. That was her purpose so that you can transcend the ugly in you. First off, most people don't even know what's wrong with them until they act out. 855-369-9898. What gets people to act out? A lot of times it's the relationship itself. Marie from California, you're in the building. Let me talk to you right now. How you doing tonight, though? I'm having a good time. Can't you tell? I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's funny, this conversation you're talking about. I was in a marriage for, oh, about 13 years. And the last six, seven years of that marriage, I was a cellmate as opposed to in a soulmate relationship. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing is, is that my ex-husband was the product of a cellmate relationship. Mm -hmm. And... He thought that was the way it was supposed to be. Wow. I mean, because he was in that environment. He was raised in that environment, correct? Raised in that environment. So I don't advocate uh, people staying in cellmate relationships for the sake of the kids, quote unquote, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what they do is grow up and feel like, okay, this is how it is when things lose their fire or lose the oil, as you put it, then you, you just live your separate life and, and go on about your business. And mm -hmm. I grew up with parents that put work into the relationship. We knew when the rhythm was off, but we also knew when, you know, dad would give us $10 on a Saturday night and say, get the hell out the house, go to the movies. <laughs> you know what I'm wow. saying? Wow, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and we worked at the relationship. So we, we saw the ups and downs and the work we, they put into it. And that, that was a wonderful example for me to know what I didn't have to live with. You know what I'm saying? Wow, wow. Great call. I appreciate the call. You're the business. I just need to know, are you with a cellmate? or a soulmate, call me right now, 855-369-9898. We're about to bring in a special guest in a moment, but before I do, I want I, I always want to go to my callers and get their opinions and their perspectives on everything. We have so many callers, I hate to leave you guys holding, so I'm going to go to you right now while we get our uh, uh, special guest prepared. But let me hit you with this. If you marry somebody, right, that isn't your soulmate, quote unquote, right? Are you settling? A lot of people just want the relationship. Let me just get to the let me get to the altar by any means. I've seen so many people settle for Shabadu. You marrying Shabadu, the dude with the do rag, and he's sixty two years. Well, he's interested in me, right? Or my biological clock is ticking. I'll just deal with whoever. 855-369-9898. If you've seen it, call me. Tell me what's happening in your lives where you settle for something that you know isn't spiritually connected to you. That's why I always say a lot of times the woman experiences unconditional love with the child more so she does than she, more so than she does with the spouse or the dad or the boyfriend or whoever the father is. Why? Because she has so many expectations of him. All you got to do is ask the, uh, the average woman, w what's your little checklist? They all got a checklist. He got to be this. He got to be that. He got to do what they do. And we do, too. So a lot of times we find ourselves looking at our partner through a filter and we can't even see them. 
for who they really are. We're seeing them for what we want them to be. That's creating a cellmate on your end. You might have met a soulmate and then put him in a cellmate box based on your ideas of what he should be as opposed to who he is. Tell me I ain't lying when you've seen those women out there trying to change a dude or waiting on a dude to change into what they want him to be. Is that not constructing a cellmate? 855-369-9898. That's the number to dial. Let me just do this right now. We've got a special guest online. And she's going to talk about, you know, her experience. And, and it's relevant to tonight's topic. Uh, she is the daughter of a famous cat right? A hip-hop legend. We can't say he's not a hip-hop legend. I'm just going to say that right now. He changed the game, right? And back in the day with NWA and Public Enemy, you know, a lot of times rap was in court because it was setting such precedents as far as subject matter content, you know. This guy was part of the reason why, you know, rap, rap you know, albums had to have little parental advisory stickers on them. She's his daughter. But her book is quite interesting. The topic, the title of it is, it's nuts. I'm not my father's daughter. Who is she? Well, she was born September 7th, 1982, the first child of an abusive mother and a soon-to-be rap music multimillionaire and the first amend amendment crusader Luther Campbell of Two Live Crew. I don't want to read her whole bio because I want her to talk to us. Her name is Shanitris and what we like to call her Shane Campbell. She's in the building right now, author of I'm Not My Father's Daughter. Could you tell me why you're not your father's daughter? Welcome to The Voice of Reason. Good evening, Sal. How are you? I'm alive and well. It's good to have you on the show. What did your daddy do or didn't do? What's going on? Let us know. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. And I wrote the book, I Am Not My Father's Daughter, because uh, my experience in being Luther Campbell's daughter, um, I got to experience being disowned and being told that I wasn't his in many different ways, um, publicly disowned. And even when I was born, I was asked, my mom was asked for a paternity test to make sure that uh, that was, in fact, his daughter. And even after that, he still stuck to the idea that I wasn't his or that I wasn't his daughter. Does so he that's still? That's I came up with the title. I'm not does, he, daughter. does he still treat you like indifferent or, or has he now embraced you? Not much has changed at all. He still uh, looks at us the same way, me the same way. And that's the essence of our relationship. That's how I came up with the book, I'm Not My Father's Daughter. Wow. You're saying, okay, if you disown me, I disown you. Is that what you're saying? Not at all. Not at all. Go deeper. I love my father. Wow. Wow. So in the book, you talk about rebelling against everything and becoming a stripper. Do you think his absence led up to that decision? I totally believe that those actions led up to that. And in the book, I Am Not My Father's Daughter, I, I keep it real. I talk about my um, relationships with silent men and my sexual ex escapades and being everything that my dad displayed on stage, that became my life. Really? Yes, it did. But why do you think you did that? Were you trying to get attention from him? Do you, did you think by, by participating in what he was putting out that you were either getting in line with what he gets down with or were you calling out to him to pay attention to you? It was a mixture of everything, though. Mm. And I'm not my father's daughter. I talk about uh, being raped by my mother's husband, her not believing me and still being with him, choosing to be with with, with her husband. I talk about how my dad didn't protect me and, and take me and console me as a troubled child that I was. I talk about being um, homeless in uh, children's shelters and um, getting, being kicked out at 17 and having a pimp and, and venturing out into the world of, of stripper and, 
and just a lot of really toxic have you ever, things for ha, me I'm, to make I'm a living so, and survive. All right. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Have you ever done no, dr- drugs or a prostitution or anything of that nature? Oh, drugs. I'm not happy about it. Drugs and prostitution. Um, the typical strip- stripper story. And even worse, my dad was famous and he had money and he could take care of me and he just simply chose not to. Do you talk to your dad now? No. Isn't your dad running for office in Miami or was running for office? Yeah, he did. He ran for office and he lost here in Miami. Wow, wow. But do you don't talk to him very often? And if you do talk to him, how is the conversation? It's very straight and and there's there's no father there. Wow. Still looking for the father in the conversation. Really quickly before we go to break, can you tell me exactly how your father disowned you publicly? Well, he did it on several occasions, one which I'd like to read in my book, an excerpt for you. When the time came for my father to sign the birth certificate, he refused. His hospital coworkers all knew that he was, in fact, my father. And he and my mom had been an item for some time. But he said something else. He said that she was just a woman in the street that he slept with in the the back of his truck. Wow. Instead, he insisted on a paternity test, which proved conclusively that he was indeed my father. And to elaborate more on that, so he got the paternity test, and it was proven that he was my father and that he is my father. And uh, a few years ago, he went on national radio broadcasts and said that we were all sperm donations. Wow. Wow. Listen, I got to take a quick break. I need you guys to call me right now at 855-369-9898. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? We're talking to somebody whose father, as described by her, was a cellmate. Call me right now, 855-369-9898. She's imprisoned by his indifference. If Luther Campbell is listening, please call in. I'd love to get your side of the story. It's fair and balanced here, but it's not Fox News. It's the foxhole. Get at me, 855-369-9898. I'm taking a quick break. I'll be back in 2.2. Great record. (laughs) Are you a soulmate or cellmate is tonight's topic if you're just tuning into the Voice of Reason. You're listening to the foxhole, Sirius XM 98 radio station stands alone i've never heard a radio station with this type of uh subject matter we're by ourselves we're revolutionaries over here 855-369-9898 that is the number to dial i need you to call me right now i'm going to callers as well once again tonight's topic are you a soulmate or cellmate uh an intriguing look at codependence toxic relationships person addiction and love as a mental illness call me right now 855-369-9898 it's very important that you uh participate and what's up with mooching you know a lot of people are moochers out there and that could be filed under emotional vampirism right still lives at home mooching off a mama uh at the end of the day after having a conversation with somebody are you uh, are are you energized or do you feel drained? Don't you know, don't you hate talking to those people where you, after you finish talking to them, you need a nap? Because they done sucked out all of your energy. They talking to you about their problems. They dragging you down with their situation. They don't want nothing but good news and answers from you about their problems. That's an emotional vampire. Do they criticize fast and ask clarifying questions later? Oh, God, I don't even want to get into my own personal life. Do they complain more than they exhibit gratitude? That's an emotional vampire. Do they expect special treatment that they may not deserve or require and refuse to reciprocate? Uh Uh-oh, emotional vampire. Do they dominate the conversation by centering most, uh, mostly all their thoughts and ideas on themselves? You know, I was thinking about, uh, you know, I've had enough of you. 855-369-9898. Call me right now if you're dealing with these type of people, man. I need to know how you're feeling and what's on your mind. Now, let me reintroduce you guys to my special guest who's online with us right now. She is the author of I Am Not My Father's Daughter, San or or Shanitris. You know, I love these African-American names. Shanitris 
Campbell. She reveals overcoming life as the child of America's most notorious First Amendment crusader, Brother Luke Campbell. And her book is on sale. And I have a quick question for her right now. How are you coping right now? Are you still stripping or has the book liberated you from that st that lifestyle or do you feel like that lifestyle is basically who you are based on how you grew up so i am um actually uh coping by keeping myself educated i'm enrolled in college classes i'm looking to get my degree soon i'm a mother of an eight-year-old boy mm -hmm. and those are how I'm coping, just raising a functional child and making sure that he hasn't, he doesn't experience what I experienced growing up. Wow. And I'm living day by day. Wow. Wow. You're taking it one day at a time. Really quickly, how can we find you? Do you have a website? Do you have a Twitter page? Uh, wh where can we buy the book? I just want to appreciate and thank you for coming on the show, but tell us where we can find you. Yes, you can buy the book at um, barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com. You can find me at tw on Twitter at Shanitris C three zero five, and you can find me on Facebook at Shane Campbell. Shane Campbell, please find her three zero five Shane Campbell on Facebook. Correct? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Please buy her books, lit read her story, see how she overcame that situation. I can say this. I'm proud that you had the strength to be able to pull yourself up by the bootstraps without your father. And hopefully you guys can reconnect on some level. And I appreciate you coming on The Voice of Reason. Thanks for sharing your show, uh, your story. And thank you, Zoe, for having me on The Voice of Reason. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks again. Now, let me get to these callers. It's very important. But before I set up these callers... Let me give you an example of the narcissistic uh, personality, because there's something out there called narcissistic personality disorder, or NPD. And, uh, you know, they're saying it's a very serious situation that affects a lot of people, uh, you know. Uh, and, and the way they break it down is the person is extremely self-centered. They only think about themselves, inconsiderate of others' feelings. And a lot of characteristics fall under this. Self-aggrandizement. Self-aggrandizement is a pattern of pompous behavior, boasting, narcissism, or competitiveness designed to create an appearance of superiority. How many people have that guy or woman in your relationship? Shaming. The difference between shaming and blaming. Shaming is that uh, you're basically making a person feel bad about themselves. Blaming is passing a buck and saying you're responsible for whatever problems is happening in a relationship. Stalking. Yeah, that's a cellmate. Mm -hmm. Stalking is any pervasive and unwelcome pattern of pursuing contact with another individual. Testing. That's what I hate. That's what I hate. Being tested in the relationship. Ask me the question directly. Don't, don't do the chess move setup question to see what I'm going to say so you can ask me what you really want to ask me or so you can reveal to me what you found out. Don't you know that? Didn't you say... uh? That girl don't text you no more? Yeah, she don't text me no more. Well, here are the text messages that I printed out. Huh? What happened? 855-369-9898. I hate the, the testing, right? Okay. Uh, thought. This is interesting. Thought policing. Thought policing is any process of trying to question, control, or unduly influence another person's thoughts or feelings. That's a cellmate. Are you with this guy? Who's with this person right now? 855-369-9898. Threats. Threats are written or verbal warnings of intentional, inappropriate, destructive actions or consequences. See what happens. Pick up my cell phone and see what happens. Go ahead. 855-369-9898. That's the number to dial. You're listening to Zoe Williams, the voice of reason on Foxhole Radio. And tonight's topic, once again, are you a cellmate or soulmate? I'm going to phone lines right now. Let's get busy. Uh, Naya. In Los Angeles, you say you're a cellmate. Talk to me. Tell me why. Hi, it's Naya. Naya, how are you? Yes, I'm good, thank you. Well, um, I could classify myself as a cellmate, and based on what you're um, speaking of regarding the narcissistic behavior pattern, I've pretty much studied that just by watching my um, SO's behavior patterns over time, and it's 
pretty much over a 20-year period of time is not an overnight um, process. Mm -hmm. But um, being a cellmate's not fun. Um, I didn't go into this relationship or marriage with grandiose ideas of splendor, because I know people are people. But my expectations were um, just as, um, you know, plentiful as his. Um, He can do certain things that I cannot do. And if I do those things, then, you know, I'm labeled. So um, as of August, I moved out of my bedroom. I'm now in a different room because I just really can't tolerate um, the behavior traits anymore. They're, they're, you know, they're consuming, and I'd rather be have my mind free. I sleep a lot better now. Wow, but why why are you still in the relationship? Pardon me. I said, what keeps you in the relationship? I, I you're not sleeping well, in the same I bed. Have, but... I have one more um, child left at home. And um, I'm trying to ensure that that child, because, see, the relationship between he and I is not the same as with my child. So I always have felt if I left, it wouldn't get any better. It would just get worse because then there's that war over the child. And I've seen many of my friends go through that. And all the custody battles, I just can't even dare to put my daughter through that. Wow. So wow. right now I'm content to be where I am because I can I severed that part of the relationship so I'm not hurt anymore. Wow. You know. Wow. Um and it makes it a lot easier for me to deal with um you know, deal with that individual. Got um it. I feel sorry for him many days because I don't even think he realizes that he's that way, you know. Um, like I said, I study behavior patterns and and, and it prompted me to study psychology just by dealing with him thinking, what is wrong? You know, I don't understand, you know, you're this way and now you're that way. Right. And I also should add, sir, that, um, he did do something that was um, not right against me with a couple of females. And so no matter how hard I try... Wait, hold on, because I'm trying to get in edgewise. You're not letting me. I'm, I'm trying okay. to get the floor. But tell me now, with a couple of what? What did you women. say? Women. Oh, with a couple of women. Okay, I just wanted to yes. make sure I heard you clearly. And he did. Yes. He, basically, some infidelity took place, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I would ask, you know, it wasn't around about questions. I, I, I'm very open and frank. You know, I want to know if you are. And I think if you are, just let me know. I, you know, I can deal with that because then I won't deal with you. You understand? Got it. But don't lie to me, you know. Got it. Hey, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Let's go to Michael in Arizona. Talk to me, Mike. Hey, what's going on, Zoe? How you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm having a ball right now. What's happening with you? Oh, man, I'm living a dream. You know, uh, I think one thing, you know, I feel like I'm with a soulmate, and I think the key to it, man, is people – create these labels of what they're looking for and all that, and they get so focused on the wrong things, they'll never find that person they're looking for. You know what I mean? Great point. Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. Go deeper. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, the only other thing I'd say is, um, you know, so many of us found our relationships on lies. You know what I mean by that? No. Go. Let me hear it. All right. So what do we all do? We go in, we want to make this first impression, right? But is that Absolutely. real us to this person? So we, mm-hmm. we start off lying. And then we build a relationship on a lie and then wonder why we go to the altar and immediately start getting disappointed when people get comfortable. And I Great think that's point. why. I took, I, you know, I took two and a half years before I, I went to the altar with my wife. I spent time to figure out who she was, let her figure out who I was, and make sure that we were compatible and saw things eye to eye before we just rushed into something. And I think that's why I was able to find somebody who is my soulmate. And I just hope that maybe something I said can help somebody you know, open their eyes to that because we get so caught up on what a person's race is or what they look like or, you know, how much they weigh or what their education or income level is. We miss the compatibility part of it. Wow. Good point, Michael. Good. I always say never date your ideas. And a lot of uh, clinicians, psychologists, uh, sociologists, they tell you, it's, you can look this up. I'm not just making it up. Something called the ideals standards model. 
it's, it's about relationship, ideal standards model, meaning whenever there is a difference in the belief, that's why we promote commonality in beliefs in order to have a good relationship. Well, here's the problem with that, because there are, I mean, we're human beings, and being human is a process. We're still in the process of understanding just what it means to be human. More wrinkles and layers and levels of the human condition are being revealed to us as, the, as humanity continues to grow and develop. I say there's a problem in dating ideas because ideas are perishable. They have a timeline, they have a time limit. You know, they're like fresh produce. <laughs> they only last a certain amount of time because you're always growing, you're always developing. And the problem is, you create a problem by wearing a belief that no longer fits you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, take that belief off. It's tight around your, your, your private area. It's, it's too tight, take it off. A lot of times people miss that. They just keep holding on to something thinking it's gonna work. Listen, you grow, you gotta change your beliefs. You gotta modify your beliefs. You gotta look at your beliefs objectively and break down where the belief is no longer working for you. Because if you interface solely through beliefs, what happens? You're dating the belief and not the person. I always tell women, monogamy for a man, that isn't a starting point for the dude in your relationship. It's an arrival point for us. One day we wake up and go, you know what? I just might just, it just might just be her. But please don't think in the very early movement of things that it's just you. Because that's just not who we are. We might be like, you know what? Let's date. Let's have fun. Let's see. This feels right. I'm giving her the majority of my time. Not all of it. The majority. But <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We have to arrive. This is, that's our destination. Like. Monogamy. Yeah, I can see me being with her. Don't expect it early on. 855-369-9898. That's all I'm saying. 855 is the number you got to dial. 369-9898. I need to hear your stories. I need to hear your opinions. We're having a great time here. I got to take a quick break, but when I come back, I'm coming back to callers, and we have another author. This thing is going to get crazier, y'all. I'll be back in 2.2. Zometheus Rising, the voice of reason, back in the building. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? Listen, it's really hard, I think, to learn to unlearn selfishness. Sometimes, you know, we're we're raised in a selfish environment. Sometimes we're raised in a narcissistic environment. We think that's how relationships are supposed to be. Then we get in a relationship and it forces us to unlearn either you're going to unlearn it or you're going to repeat it and uh that's kind of what we're talking about tonight uh are you a soulmate or a cellmate and i think sometimes being a cellmate is unconscious sometimes you don't even know what you're doing that uh you know brings down the quality of the relationship we have a wonderful guest on the line with us right now susan shapiro barash she is the title of toxic friends the antidote for women stuck in complicated friendships i keep saying relationships but it's friendships and i want you guys to go out find her participate in her movement because as you can see she is absolutely honest and open and powerful with her information we've got more callers on the line susan are you ready to tackle some of them is susan still with us i'm right yes, here she's yeah, still yeah. with us so this is what i want to say to my callers we're getting close so I want you guys to shorten your story. We can't hear the whole story. So if you have a question or if you have a statement or if you have a comment, let's bust it out in 35 seconds or less, okay? I really appreciate you hanging on the line. I appreciate you sharing your ideas and information. We want to get on as many people as possible. Here we go. Lorenza, Lorenzo from uh, Virginia. Talk to me, man. What's going on, Zoo? How you doing, I'm, Susan? I'm um, good, brother. You Zo too, huh? Yeah, yeah, Zoe and Zoe. How about that? <laughs> All right um, then, Lorenzo, talk to me, man. I think I'm, a, you know, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm a, with my soulmate, and you know, the reason I say this is because um, we both came from abusive relationships. Hers was physical, mine was verbal, and she helped me get over that. And because of my previous relationship and the baggage that I brought in, it made things more difficult. 
but she helped me get along, get get through that. And, you know, that's a whole lot of the problem with a lot of, you know, relationships. The baggage that you bring in from previous relationships and the so-called wall of protection that you put around yourself, it keeps you from enjoying the person that you might really want to and need to be with. And I'll wow. just talk about that. Hey, man, that's a great point. Thanks, Lorenzo. So that, that this is a really happy story. Here are people who evolved and got mm-hmm. to help one another. Let me ask you, Susan, why is relationship evolution so difficult? I think that it's very hard to hear the other person. Sometimes we're so stuck in our own story, we're so stuck in our own experience, that we sort of fantasize about what our partner's like instead of really listening up and paying attention. Mm, that is... All these problems start between wow. the two people because no one's really listening or understanding. But I, I think that's so profound. We fantasize about what we think our partners really like instead of really connecting to who and what they really are. It goes back to illusion is so much stronger than the reality. Wow. That's powerful. Thanks for that. We're going to go to another caller, Vicki, Illinois. You're in the building. Hey, Zoe. uh, Thank you for your show, by the way. Um, Thank you. I went from like the Cinderella syndrome in my younger years uh, and after an abusive, extremely abusive marriage and many failed relationships uh, I went into a you know a state of mind where I'm not settled. Uh, and after being alone for an extended period of time, I settled for Scooby Doo, and <laughs> found myself like, <laughs> no, I can't do this. So uh, I'm wondering, you know, and I feel like I know myself well enough to know what I desire in a person, and I'm giving enough, you know, to know I can give and take. Uh, I trust myself to know the truth when I hear it. Mm-hmm. What at this point, um, and especially being in my latter 50s, uh, not wanting to settle, going into a relationship, I'm just wondering, how do you get back into this relationship thing? Wow, wow. I, I, I kind of hear what you're talking about. Thank you for the call. And Susan, I think she's apprehensive about getting back into the relationship movement because of all that comes with it, all of the uncertainty. And again, if you haven't been using your tools, your tools might be a little rusty, but I still think it's just like getting on a bike. Once you know how to ride it, you know how to ride it. What do you think, Susan? Well, it's understandable why someone who's really been damaged in a relationship is hesitant Mm. to just jump right in again. On the other hand, we live in a society where nothing is as highly touted as coupling as having a partner. Mm. You know, we're told Mm. repeatedly. So, you know, we also really want it because we're taught that. And also it's lonely without it. Wow. So it's complicated. Wow. And and, and you could see how that could be so perplexing. Uh, The certainty of, you know, I know if I do it myself and if I do it by myself, it's going to get done. Mm -hmm. However, if, you know, the desire of wanting to do it with a partner but the fear of jumping back into it because of what has happened in the past. Yeah, That's a tough place in. to be. Right, yeah. letting someone in again is really hard, especially for women. Absolutely. 855-369-9898 is the number to dial if you're just tuning in. Are you a soulmate or a cellmate? An intriguing look at codependence, toxic relationships, person addiction, and love is mental illness. We're having a great time. Susan shapiro Barash author of Toxic Friends, The Antidote for Women Stuck in Complicated Friendships is on the line with us right now. She's incredible. Go to ZoeWilliams.com. Zoe Williams is Z-O-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Tweet me at Zoe Williams. Continue to participate. Continue to follow. Facebook me. And of course, leave a comment on the website at www.ZoeWilliams.com. We're going to call us right now. Joy, Indianapolis. You say you're a soulmate. Why? Talk to me. I'm definitely a soulmate. My husband and I, um, we've both been through a lot of things in previous relationships. Some of it, you know, put a wedge on, on this relationship. But, and I, I haven't heard anybody speak to this. Maybe I called in uh, and missed it. But our marriage is based on covenant, and God is in that. And so even though we've had moments where it's been very difficult, uh, you talked about the evolution of a relationship. You grow up. We've been married 12 years strong. And um, so I, I don't think it's a prison sentence. I think he's my soulmate. And it, 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 communication and just kind of working at it constantly to renew it and refresh it. That's, that's where we're at. 
Wow, that's a great testimonial for the soulmates. If there are any soulmates out there, call me right now at 855-369-9898 because so many cellmates have been calling in. It leads me to question Susan. With a divorce rate at 50% or better, would it stand to reason that there are so many people out there who really just don't understand what it means to be in a relationship that, you know, the ceremony of being married and, you know, all of the external things of being in a relationship is more desirable than understanding the purpose of relationship? Talk to me. Well, first of all, the divorce rate is actually lower than 50% for the first time in like 30 years or something. Wow. What that, is it? Uh, uh, where, where is it's, it? It's, I think it's somewhere between like 40 and 45. I mean, it's really staggeringly low for America right now. So wow, that's, that's good stuff. Which is really great news. But right. I think that we, we walk into these relationships very committed. Mm. We really do. If you, when you take those wedding vows, you're very committed. But a lot happens in life that you can't anticipate, and mm. you're not certain how you'll behave, and you're not certain how your, be, how your partner will behave or, or how it will play out. And, I, I, and it just becomes very difficult to stay sometimes. On the other hand, the rate of remarriage in America is 75% for both men and women. Wow. So you see people just want to be married and they want it to work. Wow. Wow. And and I'm listening to you and I'm listening to you explain certain things. And it's really calling me back to other research that I've done. Like, uh, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with the enhancement bias, where we really want to see the best in our partner. And we try to block out all of the negative things about them. And the research says that the people on the outside of the relationship, i.e. friends and, and, and siblings and mothers and parents and whatever, they have a better view because they're not emotionally connected to the relationship. My thing is, I think we all want our relationships to work, but we just wanting them to work as opposed to really having those tools to make them work is two totally different situations, and I think that's why we wind up growing frustrated with each other to the point where we break the, the, the relationship off, whether it's marriage or just long-term. What do you think of that? Well, I also think we hold the bar very high. Mm -hmm. There are so many expectations. You know, women want their husbands to be their lovers and their best friends and to like the same things that they like. You know, why don't you want to go to that chick flick with me or why don't you want to go to the mall with me? And there's a lot of codependence. I know we talked about that earlier. You were talking about it. There's a lot of expectation and there's a lot of codependence. And sometimes you just don't grow together. It's that simple. So there are all wow. different reasons that a relationship doesn't last. Wow. So there's this concept out that's been floating around. Should marriage, you know, be on a timeline or should long term, you know, relationships, should, should it be like uh, I heard this guy say it should be more like uh, professional sports contracts. Mm, I've like, heard that too. Right, right. You know, like okay, let's let's get married for four years and with a five it. year right. uh, with a five year option. Yeah. Depending on where we are in four years, we'll option the fifth year. Should it's, it be more like that? Because well, I don't think our I think we live in such a sort of love is blind and romanticized world of coupling that I don't think people would really subscribe you know, sign on for that. In a way, when you think about it, it's a very realistic approach, but I don't think it's happening anytime soon. So why are we such a fantasy-based society when it comes to what I would think is the most important aspect of the human condition, which is relationships? It's that, you know, we're all raised, all different, you know, all different generations of women and men are raised on, you know, all different social strata, ethnicity, we're all raised to believe romantic love is the answer. How can you give that up when you're told? That? I mean, look at how we follow celebrities and want to see who's getting married, who's getting remarried. What could be more exciting than to hear about, you know, look at the royal wedding. How Right, they turned that into one. the new Barbie doll. It was That was the image now. You know, love has been restored. Yeah. Because and so, <laughs> you know, who can throw, who can give that up so easily when it's something that we think will save all of us? But doesn't that create the problem at the same time? I think that's a really good point. It does because, like I said a few minutes ago, you hold the bar so high because you've been taught to expect everything from your partner, 
and your partner's just someone else struggling through, a, you know, life, which is what a great gift and a, and a great and you know very taxing. So here we are, you know, with our own issues, but yet at the same time being saviors to the other. Susan, I got to ask you this. Can one person fulfill our needs for the rest of our lives? Only if you're really whole first. Go deeper. What do you mean by really whole? A lot of people don't know. A lot of people get into relationships because they have a hole. That's right. That's the problem. The stronger you are the more you believe in yourself when you end up with a partner, the better off the relationship will be. But if you look to your partner to fill those holes, to, you know, fill you up where you feel empty, to guide you because you don't have any moral compass or any, you know, compass of any kind of your own, no, then there will be problems. What about the concept that my mate completes me? A lot of times that's part of the romanticism that gets us in trouble, yeah? Yeah, I think it does. I think that you complete you and then you bring the, all of that, all that good stuff to the relationship and say, here I am, you know, here are my flaws, here's the really good stuff, to, you, can, you know, accept me as I am and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll each grow as individuals and therefore intersect. That's wow, you heard, you heard it from Susan. Two broken people create a broken relationship. 855-369-9898 is the number to dial. we got to take another quick break. If you're just tuning in, are you a soulmate or a cellmate? This topic is on fire. I love it, man. This is what we're trying to do, change the world through content. 855-369-9898. Call me. Let me know your story. I'm going to get you on the air. Let's get busy. I'll be back in 2.2. Wait for it. Is it possible to find that one in a million person? Do soulmates actually exist? Or are soulmates rare because of our low emotional IQs? Low relationship IQ. Maybe our relationship toolbox is empty. So it seems like the soulmate is a one in a lifetime thing. If your consciousness raises, if your spiritual consciousness raises, if your knowledge of self raise, could you have multiple soulmates? Tonight's topic, are you a soulmate or a cellmate? An intriguing look at codependence, toxic relationships, personal addiction, and love as mental illness. 855-369-9898 is the number to dial. We have an incredible author on. She is the author of Toxic Friends, the antidote for women stuck in complicated friendships. Her name is Susan Shapiro Barash. It's she's been on fire. I keep throwing her passes. She keeps catching them. This is what we're doing. We've got more callers on the line. Susan, are you ready to deal with them? Susan? Yeah, I'm here. I believe it. I believe you're there. (laughs) So what we're going to do is tell the callers again, keep it short and brief. We're getting down to the nuts and bolts of the show. Short and brief. I want to get everybody on. I want everybody to participate. Short and and brief, 35 seconds or less. Here we go. Steve from Miami. You can't change your partners. Talk to me. Tell me why. Hey. So, what up, Steve? What's happening? Uh, okay. Now, what I'm saying, once you, once you find your soulmate, what happens is like the talk you had last week. We start looking at each other and feeling how we talk. talking. You might look a little different and then set the other person off. We start, you find your soulmate, but you don't work with your soulmate. You have the outside people that's telling you stuff. You know, like your, your wife has a girlfriend. Oh, he's doing this. He's doing that. Yaggy, yaggy, yak. You know, you have to really make the commitment to understand and and talk to each other. Really talk to each other. Because I feel your, your woman, when, once you got that woman, that's your best friend. That's your best friend. I can tell her anything. And that would wow. make me happy. Wow. Good point. Thanks for that call. Lewis, Arizona, are you in the building? Let's do this. Yes, I am, though. I, uh, how you doing, though? I'm good, brother. You? All right. Hey, you know, my wife uh, is my soulmate. You know, I knew that the first time I seen her because me and her were friends before we were uh, married. You know, I've been married with my wife for 19 years. You know, and if she is the only one before me, I don't try to go out and look for anything because I try to get to know her and understand what she's saying, you know, and I think that's why a lot of relationships don't work because, uh, you know, they don't understand 
what the woman is trying to say to them or they don't want to try to understand anything that she's saying about their relationship or what's going on in her head, you know, and I think that's why a lot of relationships do not work. You know, they get arguing and, you know, that's when all those emotions come in and friends, you know, they try to divide those families and that's when the devil come in. Wow. Hey, that was a great point. I, I like what he's saying. Is it possible for outside influences, friends and families, to turn a soulmate into a cellmate? Susan? Well, I do think that if you're not a really solid couple and there are outside forces, maybe the mother-in-law, maybe the sister of your wife are, are you know, somehow saying negative things about you and it creeps into the relationship then the relationship, of course, isn't airtight to begin with, but it really is toxic. It's a problem. Wow. Wow. Great point. Let me ask you another question. I, I don't know if you've seen this on Oprah or anything. It's been floating around a lot in the African-American community. Seventy percent of African-American women are not married. Do you think that 70 percent of African-American women have standards that are unrealistic and too high? I don't think it's that simplistic, no. Is that one of the reasons they saw? I mean, I, you know, I've spoken with a lot of African-American women for my studies, and I think that they, they are looking for partners who are very solid. I think that, you know, in many cases that, you know, there are more women of every ethnicity in colleges across the country today. So right. when, you know, when you go to college and you're educated and you're looking for a certain job, maybe you want your partner to be right there with you. So that could be a problem. What do you think? Well, I'm just saying, if you look at how America is stratified when it comes to college-educated women versus college-educated men, and we're talking about an African-American community, for them to want an African-American man with all of the different things that are going against public enemy number one in a lot of ways, that's how black men see themselves Uh as public enemy number one, uh, you know, they black men feel like you guys expectation for us is not in alignment with the way society views and treats us. What do you think of that? First of all, I think it's really unfortunate. You know, Newsweek did a big, I think it was Newsweek. There was a big front story on this a few years ago that fascinated me. And the women were really saying that they did want their partners to be more like them. But that, but that, it's always the case that, you know, you want your partner to, to echo you or mirror you in, in terms of lifestyle and education. Right. So what's happening now is there are a lot of authors and a lot of people writing books that are encouraging black women to go and date white men specifically. You know, because that's the guy who's there in the environment, the work environment when they graduate college or whatever. And they're saying, hey, your choices are many. You don't have to just sit and wait for a black man. So my point is, is that right? Do you think that's fair to say, you know, what, your soulmate could be somewhere else? And I'm sure it can. But to promote openly to go and date other races and in a sense, forget about your own man. What do you think of that? Well, it's such a personal decision who you end up with and how he suits you in terms of ethnicity, religion, all of that. But I'm surprised. I'm not aware of this literature, so I can't really speak to it. But But I think that, you know, communities always want us to, you know, women to be in their in the same you know mode as with their partner right that, right right always been the way and that's called the, the not to sound like a professor but that's called the theory of homogamy like mm. with like wow go for, deep for i love it and marriage has always been in america for every ethnic group it has always been i think encouraged that you marry the same Wow. This is can I I say you're a great guest. Every time I throw you a question, you catch it like Jerry Rice. (laughs) This is beautiful. I love it. This is really my area of study. So I but it is hard for women. It it, it is hard for women to find a partner for many reasons. Mm -hmm. And perhaps they are asking too much. You know, that's something else we really have to think about as women. Right. Because by asking too much or by asking unrealistically, you're actually in the process of creating a cellmate as opposed to a soulmate. And, and, and there'll be so much tension in the relationship. You know, here we are. We live a long time. You know, the two men who called in and said they're married to their soulmates. It was so touching because they're really committed. 
they're really wow. appreciating these women. Wow. I want to take one more caller. Would you mind uh, fielding it with me? Of course not. Okay, let's do it. Sherry from Virginia, you're in the building. Yeah, I just had a comment. Um, I am a, a soulmate on the outside or to everybody around me, my family, my friends, but truly it's a soulmate situation in that we've been together for two years, and um, wow, he is just, I love him. I mean, I'm with him because I love him, but I just know that emotionally it's toxic. Like um, six months ago I found out that he was into some kind of lifestyle that I've never even been exposed to with like transgender and or transsexuals. And I found wow. it out kind of, I knew something wasn't right, but I was snooping. Um, and the fact that I even had to do that, you know, I'm not 20, you know, I'm well beyond that. And, you know, I know this now, but I don't know how to disconnect because I know that, I mean, you know, I went to him with it and he kind of explained it away. This was something that I was interested in, but yet and still I see that you're still doing this kind of thing. And I don't know to what degree it is, and I just feel like he's not being honest with me and just different scenarios like that. But I just go back to the fact that I do love him. And I'm a professional woman. I have the house, the car, the great job. And it just seems more acceptable to be coupled um, in this environment. So it's kind of hard for me to even paint the picture different to my friends, my families, my colleagues that I'm in this toxic relationship. Wow. I just want to thank you for the call. I appreciate it. But my goodness, that was that was wild. That's a really? Heavy. That's a heavy that... because here you are, you know, conflicted. You know, the image versus the reality. Wow. I mean, how long can you how long can you put up a front like that? You can't. Not for no, long. I mean, it gets heavier funny. every day. Let me just do this, Susan. I appreciate you so much for coming in and sharing your vast knowledge. I want to urge all my callers, all my listeners, everybody that participates with the Voice of Reason, first and foremost, thank you for calling. Thank you for participating. You guys make the show great week in and week out. This is your platform. I know I rush you sometimes, but guess what? You get to call back next week and get it off again. Thank you guys for calling. But Susan Shapiro Barash, the author of Toxic Friends, the antidote for women stuck in complicated friendships. Let me just say, you killed tonight where can they find you where can they get your books i urge you to go participate follow her movement participate buy her books get down with her where can they find you You are so nice uh, my book just came out on mothers and daughters and paperback go to my website susan shapiro com. wow thank you thank you thank you for your participation tonight you are an excellent guest we will be having you on future shows you were wonderful thank you thank you now zoe williams final thought you're a cellmate if you're not growing. And if you're in a relationship, you're contagious. <laughs> you understand? You're a soulmate if you help people grow. But you can't help anybody grow unless you're firmly rooted in the knowledge of yourself, which causes you to grow. Relationships can be very fulfilling. They can be very self-educative if you're observant. Right? We talked about your communication styles. We talked about all of the things that make you a cellmate. But let me tell you what soulmate is about. It's about higher consciousness. Higher consciousness is connected to the tools you have in your relationship toolbox. You understand? Respect, consideration, appreciation, the development of intimacy that comes from those basic cornerstones of a good relationship. Honesty, integrity, some type of moral compass. All of these things lead to the development of a soulmate. And the higher your consciousness, the more you can see the beauty and the God-given essence in every person you meet. There's only one soul in existence, and it permeates every being. Everybody potentially could be a soulmate if you can see that divinity within them. Most people are, divine, are blind to the divinity within themselves, so how could they possibly see divinity in someone else? Only one soul, and we all share a piece of it. I'm your soulmate, and you're mine. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, and that's how we get down up in this piece. I'll be back next week with another heater. Go to the website, www.zoewilliams.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Zoe Williams. 
Email me, zo at SiriusXM.com. www.zowilliams.com is the destination. Leave a comment. I will approve it. You're my people. I'll see you next week. Deuces. <laughs>